Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at a form of autonomous AI or an autonomous AI agent. And this is actually from a paper that was released online called Task Driven Autonomous Agent using GPT-4 Pinecone Langchain for diverse applications. It was actually announced on Twitter. I saw this last week by Yohei Nakajima and he had a nice sort of tweet post announcing it. And if we go through it, we can see that, okay, the idea here is that we're using a large language model to generate ideas, do some sort of critique on those ideas, and then ideally execute tools. So this has elements of throwbacks to tool format, some of the other key papers around this that have been here. One of these things shows it's got some nice diagrams in here showing like how this works and some of the key points into it. So the user basically provides an objective and a task. And then once that is set into a task queue, the large language model basically decides how to execute that. And then as it develops stuff, it saves it to a memory. And that memory then can be accessed through different things. It then goes back around these loops. It's got a prioritization agent to decide what task comes next and what you know, is priority, etc. And it basically goes through this over time. So if we look in here, there's, they've got another diagram in here, just going through it as well of basically you've got this task queue, we've got the execution agent and each of these things for these parts is actually just the same language model. You're just using different prompts. You're using different ways to manipulate the output. And then you've got the memory, which in this case, they're using Pinecone, which is a vector store database so that they can store things in there and that you can basically do lookups on them and stuff like that as well. So the, the idea here, I think is really good. The paper talks a lot about using GPT-4, Pinecone and the Langchain framework to basically do this. Along with this, he also released some code. So the code has got the nickname baby AGI. I don't think this is approaching AGI in any way, but it's a cute name. And you know what, this is supposedly a very pared down version of the original one. So we don't actually know how good the original one was. As far as I understand, we it hasn't been released or we haven't got videos of trying it and stuff like that. Looking at the baby AGI that's here, this is that this code has definitely been released. We can play around with it. In fact, I've set up a, a collab so that you can also have a play with it. And so we can just have a look at how it works, some of the ideas behind it and what you could do with an agent like this in the future. So you need quite a number of API keys to get this going. You will need an open AI key, of course. You can basically set it up to use either GPT-4 or in this case, I'm using GPT-3.5 Turbo. It's nice enough to have a print statement does say for using GPT-4 that, you know, this could get expensive. We also need Pinecone API key and you need to set up the Pinecone env environment. So this will change based on your, where you're setting it up. I just left this in so that you could get an idea of what you should be putting in there. Cause I think it's not always totally clear. You need to put in a table name. You can't use underscores or anything in this table name here. And then you need to set up an objective and initial task. So here I basically said, okay, plan a romantic dinner for my wife this Friday night in central Singapore. And the initial task is make a list of the tasks. And you'll see that, that while this particular one is not set up with any tools or anything, it does a nice job at going through the thinking processes that it would need to do. Now in here, it does seem like they're planning on adding tools to, to this, looking at the, at the code base, there are tools being added. It's also interesting. It looks like they're planning to add, or they've added the llama. I'm guessing this is the four bit version of Llama that runs locally to do this thing. So that, that would be interesting to see how well that does. If we go through, we can look and see, okay, after it's got a lot of setup code for doing this and for Pinecone setup code, the main logic behind these things is not overly complex. So we can see that we've got the task creation agent. So this has basically got its own prompt here. And we've just got nice F strings, basically substituting, doing kind of what Langchain does with its prompts. And it's then able to basically call that. It's got a prioritization agent. Again, same concept, but with a different prompt. So you're using a different prompt to do the same thing. You can see here, you're a task prioritization AI, tasked with cleaning the formatting and reprioritizing the following tasks. And then you pass in tasks, consider the ultimate objective of your team, passes in that as well. So this is very similar to some of the agents that we see in Langchain and that we've looked at as well. Um, 
We've then got at the execution agent, again, same concept, different prompt. You are an AI who performs one task based on the following objective. Take into account these previously completed tasks, passing in a context, your task, and then the response. So it's interesting here that they're setting the temperature quite high, for, whereas normally in Langchain, you would actually set the temperature pretty low, like close to zero or zero for this kind of thing. So that may have also affected its output for doing this. All right. So then basically just go, you've just got this huge leap. It goes through, it does it. So let's look at some of the output that we're getting from this. So First off, make a list of tasks. So you can see that it does a pretty nice job of choose a romantic restaurant in central Singapore, make a reservation for two at the chosen restaurant, select a bouquet of flowers to surprise your wife with. This is definitely not something I asked for, but okay, maybe it's something that it decided. You could imagine in the future though, you would want the agent to actually come back to you with suggestions. And then you would say yes or no to these suggestions. Choose a romantic gift for your wife. Purchase the selected gift from the store in central Singapore. It's really going all out on this dinner. Um, and then finally confirm the dinner, etc. Okay, so research and choose a romantic activity to complement the dinner experience. If anything, I would say that the agent is very verbose. And again, this would all be down to the manipulation of the prompt that you would want for something like this. And you could imagine that this prompt might be really good for one task, but not great for another task. Um, all right, it goes through, it comes up with su suggesting a private sunset yacht cruise along the Marina Bay. Now this, it, it's very good in that it's getting missions right and it's getting things like that. Again, this is to be expected because we're using one of the large open AI models for doing this. It's quite funny how it's choose a romantic outfit, hire, rent a luxury car. A lot of things that it, it's making suggestions, but they may not be ideal sort of suggestions for a romantic date in Singapore. One of the things I did find it was interesting was, and it's funny how it goes on to say, please note that you may need to provide Vela's driver's license and stuff like that. I, you could imagine in the future that these things will have a variety of information on you and then be able to use that. Like if it's got a knowledge base on you of your driver's license, your credit card number, all those sorts of things. I certainly wouldn't give this one my credit card number because it seems to want to spend a lot of money. So you can see here it's picked out a jewelry store. It actually picks out three re real jewelry stores and it gets, seems to get their location correct. Pretty impressive. It then also picks out a nice restaurant. And it's interesting that the restaurant that it picks is a luxury restaurant. I think it's a Michelin, I'm pretty sure it's a three-star Michelin restaurant in Singapore. And so again, this is all coming from the OpenAI model. There's nothing unique about this that's coming from Baby AGI. It's just nice manipulation of the OpenAI APIs in this. It goes on and on. It takes a bit of time to run through these. In the end, I just stopped it because certainly can ping the API quite a bit and get a lot of things back. It is interesting to, you know, I tried another one of planning a party and that also did the basic stuff quite well. What we're lacking here is the ability for it to come back to you and to know what it should come back to you about. And this is going to be one of the key things, I think, for a lot of these things going forward. It claims that it's contacted the restaurant and it's made a booking. Um, it's very strange that about their policy on bringing outside candles. Again, this is, I would say, dying in the details of, of this kind of thing. Anyway, it's here. You can have a play with it yourself. I ended up stopping it just because it seemed to be going on and on. Right? The idea, I think, is the key thing here. The idea of developing these agents that have the ability to run a variety of different tasks and are incorporated with a variety of different tools. That's what we're going to see a lot of in the future. We're going to see this with the ChatGPT plugins or the OpenAI plugins format that's coming along. We're already seeing this with some of the things in Langchain. So this sort of just, you know, is a nice way of wrapping up some of these ideas and giving you some idea of how they could be in the future. As always, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.